In the year 1602, in a castle in Spain, a girl was born. She grew up in this castle and founded in it a religious order devoted to the Mother of God. This order still exists here after almost four centuries. The founder was Sister Mary of Jesus. She was destined to release to the world many previously unknown supernatural happenings in the life of the Mother of God. The visionary's body remains incorrupt as a mark of divine approval of her writings. Decrees were given by Popes Innocent XI, Alexander VIII, Clement IX, Benedict XIII, Benedict the Fourteenth and Clement the Fourteenth in favor of this work. In the convent rests the incorrupt body of the saint and also the incorrupt body of her mother. Here can be seen some of the relics, statues, and articles that formed a part of the saint's life. This cross that weighs over 100 pounds was carried during part of the three hours that the saint spent every early morning meditating on the Passion of Jesus. One can read the 600 letters she exchanged with the King of Spain, advising him how to rule his country. Today, modern telescopes reveal the immensity of God's creation. Now we know that God has created billions of stars and galaxies in the heavens and God maintains them in existence in a cosmos that is more than 80 billion light years in width. God has made this vast creation into part of his kingdom. We await the coming of that kingdom, the kingdom that will have one king and one queen to rule forever. The one king, Jesus Christ, will come soon with great glory. The one queen, the Virgin Mary, whom God has made queen of the universe, will come in a different way. At Fatima, she predicted, in the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. Russia will be converted, and a period of peace will be given to the world. The great treasure existing in this convent is these eight volumes that Mary of Agreda wrote, which forever reveal to mankind eternal prerogatives and privileges endowed upon the Immaculate Mother of God. These eight volumes are divided into three parts. The first part manifests previously hidden matters in the creation and life of the Virgin Mary before the Annunciation. The second part reveals many previously unknown splendors of the life of the Mother of God and her Son, Jesus Christ. This section begins with the incarnation of Jesus and ends with the ascension into heaven. The last part describes the life of the Mother of God as she directed the formation of the Catholic Church in its beginning. The Spanish version of the City of God on this website is transcribed from the original 17th century volume shown on this film. The English version was published in 1912 and by U.S. copyright law is thus also public domain as is the Spanish original. After the manifestation of the great universal warning predicted at Garamondel, the world will give the Queen of Heaven some of the honor and love it owes her as co-redemptrix of mankind. The evangelists have told the world about the life of Christ. Mary of Agreda was called by God to tell the world about the life of God's mother. After the fall of Adam and Eve, centuries passed until at the appropriate time, God sent Moses to begin scripture and give the Ten Commandments. After that, God sent the prophets one after another. Then came redemption. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, that is, God with us. The Roman Catholic Church, from the time of the Apostles' Creed, has professed that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of the Father. Christ's divine nature had no mother. The Apostles' Creed also professes him to be born of the Virgin Mary. Christ's human nature had no father. The Virgin Mary appeared to Mary of Jesus for many years. She was told many secrets hidden in Scripture. 
The authoress of Agretta is written in the history books because while in her convent, she bilocated over 500 times to the southwestern states of America and catechized the Indians living there. She was known as the Lady in Blue. She slept only two hours a day. She got up at 11 o'clock at night to spend three hours meditating on the Passion of Christ. Mary took penance seriously, eating only one meal a day in the evening. On Friday, she ate nothing. She wore penitential garments of rough material. She scourged herself severely, losing much blood. To whom much is given, much is expected.